Okay, welcome back to now lecture four in lighting design. Uh, in our last, last presentation, I went over the different lamps and sources. And now we're going to talk a lot more about that topic of the texture of light. So if we really think about the texture of light, we have diffuse or direct. You can see here, diffuse um, shows um, very little in the way of patterning. The wall is very evenly illuminated, whereas a very direct source creates these scallops, these parabolic shapes on the wall, and these spots of light. Why do we call them spotlights? Right. So this is, this is, in a nutshell, the different textures of light. And actually, the best solution is something that might combine both. Diffuse light leaves the source equally at all angles and reflects off of all surfaces at all angles. Diffuse light is really good when you need to do uh, a relatively exacting work, when you don't want shadows. Uh, that's why we say our classrooms are typically done that way, office space. Um, so it's a good, I would consider a very kind of utilitarian and kind of functional way of dealing with light. Um, it certainly lacks the drama of direct fixtures, but it's still very effective. As I said, a balance of diffuse light and direct light can create a very rich um, interior environment. So diffuse lights, we're all familiar with these. We actually have a light fixture a lot like this in our ceiling at Community College. Uh, these are typical older with the reflectors um, that are trying to hide that we don't see the bulb. This is concealing it behind uh, this uh, diffuser. So a diffuse light, we're really familiar with that from fluorescence. Uh, we can get them from other sources or other ways these are working. These are also producing a diffuse light. Sort of going off in all directions equally. A diffuse light, if you use it, reduces texture. Now you may want that, you may not want that. That's part of your design decision. Often we want to render texture and that's why we will use a direct fixture. I should say luminaire. I should be, after all, this is lighting design and luminaire is really the proper uh, terminology to use. Diffuse light reduces eye strain. So we want a combination here. There's a lot of diffuse light coming from the lamps. Um, and there is also some uh, direct light coming from those overhead recessed uh, fixtures. Luminaires. Keep having to catch myself. Directional light. Luminaires with elements or reflectors used to push light in a specific direction or directions. Here's a directional light. This is, by the way, this is a little MR16 I used a lot in my days in lighting. Very easy, very compact, usually two inches across, gives a nice bright sparkling light halogen source. Uh, we see these reflected, re replaced now with LEDs. So here at directional lighting, it's all coming from one direction and is raking this shape of uh, the surfaces uh, a bit more unevenly. Here, directional light has real boundaries to it and here is really emphasizing the rough texture of this brick wall. Again, is this something you want to do? You're the designer, you get to decide. And here's another one where some directional light is also uh, picking up the texture of this uh, old brick wall and creating a definite richness. A directional light we would use as an accent in here in these niches to highlight objects. Um, four levels of light texture, and really there are levels of light texture, but think of it as on a continuum from very directional light, directional light, diffuse light to very diffuse light. And yes, you can have one uh, luminaire doing multiple things. Uh, a direct and diffuse light is not uncommon. I particularly like these for dining room tables. Uh, so you get an overall ambient light, a diffuse light, and then you get a direct light that's illuminating the tabletop. So, very directional light. Here's the MR16. Um, that's what's being used in these recessed incandescents that we see in the, this image here. 
a somewhat directional light. light. This is a parabolic reflector, a, probably a wide flood. Um, and here we're seeing that it creates these wide scallops. I find it a little distracting. I think it would work a little better if uh, there were more elements to focus on in this space than just that painting. But that's the effect we get. A diffuse light, relatively diffuse. In this case, a wide flood light um, and is creating in this interior a fairly soft and relatively even light. We're still getting that scalloping uh, shape, the, that parabolic shape. Very diffuse light. Yeah, we see it all over the place in classrooms and uh, spaces for business and work. Any place that uh, requires exacting work and we don't want shadows um, or limit the shadows. So the different shapes of light. Yes, light has a shape to it. Pools of light, planes of light, and then lighted objects. So here are pools of light from relatively direct fixtures, um, creating very distinct and different shapes, illuminating the space, but also creating these uh, very specific shapes. Um, this is a little much here. These pools of light can be a little bit overused. You decide. These should be further away from the wall, but maybe you like that the aesthetic that comes from it. We can create planes of light, in here where we have recessed linear lights, most likely fluorescence, and we have down lights. And so this creates an overall wash on the surface. Here we have recessed cove with most likely a fluorescent fixture that creates a, a plane of light on the ceiling. And here we have lighted objects. These are both working as a direct fixture and as something that calls our attention. So yeah, it does often does double duty. This is what I was talking about over this island, over uh, a uh, dining table. This can be really good. We have a lighted object that's something attractive to look at. It's creating both direct and diffuse light, so we can be doing them all at once. Here, lighted objects, sconces that are lighting the wall but are illuminating themselves. Here, you have one in your house, I'm sure. A shaded lamp. I um, actually have kind of gotten rid of those. Um, I still have a couple in my house, but um, I've spent the money on doing a lot of recessed adjustable uh, uh, fixtures in my ceiling, at least in my living room. So, location of a light source. A lot of this is kind of basic. The most typical one, we're getting ceiling to wall or ceiling to floor, but we also have other variations. We have ground upwards, which can be a little bit tricky. We'll get to that. Uh, on the wall upwards, from a wall to shine on the wall, from a cove to a surface. That's how we get those planes or lines of light. Glowing sources and low lighting, what we typically call step lighting, to a floor. So let's look at some examples of those. Here, ceiling to wall, really emphasizing the texture, very direct fixture, um, and really bringing out the richness and the texture of the wall in this restaurant. Uh, your, this is going to be your most typical installation. From the ground upwards, so here illuminating the wall, but a little bit of a surprise, um, doing something unexpected, um, illuminating from the ground up. We have a difficulty uh, both in interior and exterior applications if water gets in here. It tends to do that. So we have to be kind of careful about where we use these fixtures. If they're really in a wet situation, even though they're fixtures that are rated for it, luminaires, rather, keep catching myself, um, is that we, that is a consistent problem. Here we have one that's actually coming both on the wall and upwards to the ceiling, but also a little bit up and down on the wall itself. Here's definitely one that's shining, is mounted on the wall, and is shining on the wall in these sconces. Here's a cove to a surface with fluorescent most likely, possibly LED strips, uh, creating a really rich plane and pattern. Glowing sources, we use these all the time. Um, that really attract attention to themselves. And you have to ask, do you want the object to call attention to itself? Because the 
most obvious way since we're attracted to light of things calling attention to themselves is to create a glowing object, the brightest thing in the room. So you may or may not want to do this. I think this room would have been more effective if there had been a combination of fixtures with recessed down lights and these fixtures, these glowing sources, that would both be on dimmers. So we could change the quality and atmosphere. Um, and here, low lighting to the floor. Typically these are called step lights. Very convenient. We want to light the path. We want to light our steps, but maybe we want to keep our light levels low overall overall. So what can we control about light? Its intensity, bright or dark, light color, warm or cool, and with LEDs we can pick any color in the spectrum. Uh, light texture, direct or diffuse. We can also, on top of that, the light shape, pool, plane, point, light origin, the fixture, and its mounting. So here, back in the old days, this is just a picture of before we really could rely on artificial lighting. Uh, we had gas lights, we had electric lights. This is a typical floor in a building that needed to rely on natural light. You know, the revolution of lighting and the light bulb, you know, has uh, eliminated this notion of nighttime. Many people think that that's one of the things that's wrong with our modern existence. We should go back to a life that was governed by the sun. You decide. And here we also want to look at lighting design with sketches. These are some of the sketches I'm hoping we will see uh, for your final projects. Oops. So here are a couple sketches of a very complex lighting layout. I won't go into the details. Um, but combining daylight and artificial lighting and thinking very much about the shape of light in this case from direct fixtures but also indirect lighting lighting the roof in this really complex shape this barn like shape so do we want to reveal texture in that case we're going to use direct fixtures we could use indirect fixtures if we wanted to minimize the texture but we've gone to all the trouble of creating these textures we might as well show them off Again, an accent, the texture of the stone wall. This is the way we probably want to light a stone wall. We've gone to some expense to create this. We want to highlight that with these recessed um, spotlights um, that are uh, providing a light that is cascading down this wall and really providing relief to the stone. Or we can conceal it here in an art gallery where we want a soft light, an overall light. Um, and there actually is an ambient light that's partly using daylight, partly using artificial light, and then they're very carefully concealed. You can just see them. Lights on a track that are providing an even light to illuminate these large abstract paintings. We also have color. Do we want cool? Cool can be a little weird. We're not used to it so much. It can be this is part of this aesthetic where this interior is blue. It's a little otherworldly. We're happier with warm. In this case, this is an Indian restaurant and I really like the way they did the lighting fixtures in here. But the warmth, comfort, relaxation, we're used to this because light sources like the sun, like fire, candle flames, they're warm and we tend to find them comforting more normal. That's why if you go out and you try and just buy a light bulb, uh, like a new LED, which I just bought, it's going to be warm, typically. That's what we tend to operate with. That's what we find pleasing. And here we have a nice combination of warm lights in a dining room. Um, and also we can switch these out and depending on the season, um, and we can raise the lighting levels here. So um, that's why it's a beautiful thing to have lighting on dimmers for most spaces. Um, we can really transform the quality and character of the space. Here, intensity, we're lighting the surface. There's a recessed cove, linear fixtures, um, lighting the ceiling, but also over here, linear fixtures, lighting uh, this uh, shelf. 
intensity, we can also be dealing with dark surfaces. There's actually a little bit of light shining on these dark surfaces, uh, but for the most part, we're going to let them stay dark. And you can see, even with lights shining on them directly, we're not getting a lot of light off these dark surfaces. So it's very important to think about that in your lighting design. Finish makes a big difference. Is it a shiny or a flat surface? Shiny is going to reflect light, like here. Flat surfaces will tend to absorb light more. Finish, is it textured or matte, which will be absorbing more light um, and more texture? So here I, I get into some of the different installations that both include uh, indirect planes of light um, and just to show you some different design ideas. So here we have a combination of direct but mostly diffuse fixture for a screening room. All of it obviously dimmable so that we can look at uh, the movie. Here we have uh, a relatively dark space where we've really paid attention to illuminate the floor and the space beyond. So it really draws us through the space. Here we have some kind of trippy colored lighting to really draw attention to the bar as well as the base of the bar. There's some uh, direct fixtures built into the front of the bar. I want to start giving these as these possibilities for what you may want to do in your own lighting design. And here's a pretty interesting example of mostly indirect and a few direct fixtures um, in a really uh, innovative bedroom. I don't know if I would live with it. That's quite a few steps up, but very intriguing. Here's an example where we're really dealing with vertical vision and the shape of light, where we've both got fixtures which we really can't see in the floor, creating these scallops going upward, and we've also got some spots that are also not quite visible in this picture uh, that are casting these shapes on the wall. Very modernist kind of look. Um, here we've got some interesting ways of illuminating steps. Here typical bedroom layout with both direct and indirect lighting coming off of those lamps. Here, a nice example of some step lighting, some kind of scary winder stairs, but this is about the lighting effect. I love when I see uh, an effect like this of illuminating the riser um, on a stair. And then we get into really exciting kind of sculptural effects and colored lighting and really illuminating the texture here. Or here, where we have colored lighting, in this case uh, LEDs, could be, could be neon, but it's most likely LEDs. And creating this floating plane in a slightly surreal, if you like, kind of futuristic look. I think that's that sort of modernist look that comes with cool and blue light. And here, a, a lot of blue light dealing with this lovely pool and then a warmer or neutral light for the interior. And here, a really nice combination of diffuse light lighted planes for a bathroom. And here, where the ceiling is illuminated and there's also uh, lamps and recessed down lights. So these are the kind of flavors of light that you can get. And here you can mix them. We can create a plane of light and these are all adjustable and on dimmers. So we're illuminating the floor, we've got a plane of light in the ceiling. Uh, this is not an expensive thing to do, but it can be very effective in terms of the flexibility of space. Here's something a lot more high-end. We're really emphasizing the merchandise and we're using a series of adjustable spotlights and we want to have flexibility um, and a certain level of drama. Or here, where we've got a kind of soothing bedroom with uh, mostly indirect lighting uh, that's concealed. Or this kitchen, where we've got both uh, some direct light in the ceiling, but we're also creating some recesses with the planes. Uh, and here, where we've got a lot of indirect fixtures in this rather futuristic interior. And here, a combination of skylight and uh, direct and diffuse light. Um, I wish the stair was better lit. Maybe the light was turned off. And here, again, 
feeling of floating planes, a recessed cove, these very direct fixtures here, that would be illuminating something like in a showroom. Here a plane of light really emphasizing the texture and uh, planes of light illuminating the wall but also recessed down lights that are illuminating the space in this hotel lobby. And here uh, a really nice high-end interior with an overall high lighting level and then adjustable uh, recessed lights uh, mounted in the ceiling. And here a light that illuminates the wall but also gives us a nice diffusing light um, for a bathroom. Here typical light another way solution of uh, a railing light of uh, solving a stair light and uh, also a railing. We see this solution quite a bit. And here a really dramatic interior uh, with a very brilliantly lit ceiling. Again this floating look of the light buried in the base. Um, so again lots of options here. A relatively diffuse light maybe not quite so successful. This could probably have used a little more directed light on the walls of this cafe. And here, um, you know, a high-end uh, wine store with both uh, direct light and then light illuminating the niches on the side. So, I threw a lot of ideas at you. I think some things are very obvious. Um, and I will also post a link to a really good video that talks about LEDs and approaches lighting design from a slightly different perspective. It's mostly architectural lighting design and um, in that it focuses on the exteriors and less on the interiors, but I think you'll find it really interesting. Uh, it's a series and I'll be just having, I'll be posting a link to one of those. Okay, that concludes this video. Thank you for your attention.